Hey everyone, it's Chris from Class of Ring Attire. I know this is late, but this is our famous PowerPoint presentation from WrestleMania 29. Uh, we made this available to you guys back in April, but it didn't seem quite the same. So what I've done is I've put this video together, and this is just me giving the presentation like I did way back in April. Uh, Basically, this presentation served as a way to catch all of our friends up uh, on the day of WrestleMania because some of them just they don't watch on a regular basis. Um, so every slide was made by Joel, and I wasn't allowed to actually see it until I presented it that day uh, because Joel just thought it would be hilarious. And it was kind of funny, um, but it was a huge hit with our friends. And uh, here it is for you. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Welcome to WrestleMania. This is a brief PowerPoint explaining all that you will need to know to enjoy the single greatest wrestling event to ever grace the eyeballs of humankind. We hope. So, you're here to watch WrestleMania, are you? It's a good thing you've been keeping track of everything WWE related in the past year. What? You haven't? What a dumb shit. Sorry, that was uncalled for. Fortunately for you, if someone keeps clicking on this slideshow, everything you need to know will appear before your eyes. What a coincidence. Good thing it worked out like that. So click away, my friend. Click away. Team Friendship versus Ziggy and Big E. First things first. At some point, somebody will most likely refer to these guys as Team Hell No. Just ignore that. No matter what anyone says, remember that the name of this tag team is Team Friendship. Seriously, if you take nothing else from this match, remember this point. Just Team Friendship. All Team Friendship. This is Big E. Sure, the guy looks like a beast, and he is, we assume. We haven't really seen him in the match officially. Just hope that at some point that this man will get his hands on a microphone and talk. It will be amazing. Seriously, this guy is like Carlton on steroids. Just, just trust me. Look, the following are actual tweets from Big E's official Twitter. On ring attire, for those of you who questioned my new attire, I looked in the mirror one day and said, if Lady Gaga ain't wearing pants, I ain't either. On taking criticism from fans, he says, when someone says something mean to me on Twitter, I just fire up the Florence and the Machine Pandora station, curl up in a ball, and weep. On trying to get his Twitter account verified, he says, hunger strikes are overplayed, therefore I will consume inordinate amounts of food until I'm verified. Join me. Hashtag eat for Big E. This is Dolph Ziggler. What you need to know is that this man possesses amazing in-ring abilities that will most likely be on full display tonight. But you see that blue box he's holding? Because of that box, he's going to appear later in the slideshow, so we'll get back to Mr. Ziggy in more detail later. Right now, what you need to know is that in the ring, this guy is going to be pants tightingly awesome. So, for this match, remember, Team Friendship. Chris Jericho versus Fandango. This is actually one of those matches that doesn't have a whole lot of build-up, but you know what? They, well, that's supposed to be a they. They don't really need any build-up to be excited about this match. You know why? Because of this. Oh, yes. Motherfucker Chris Jericho. As for the other guy, his name is Fandango. Like the movie Ticket Sight with the paper bags, he's a dancer. There's actually not a whole lot to say about this guy because we've never seen him wrestle before. Seriously, his debut match will be at WrestleMania, so I guess the WWE has confidence in this guy. But still, this match is going to be good. Everybody say thanks, Chris Jericho. And Joel got this wrong. We've seen him before. His name's Johnny Curtis. Just saying. The Shield versus the other guys? Okay, so there are two teams of three people in this match. The first is called The Shield. And sweet, tap-dancing Christ, these guys are cool. Especially that gentleman on the left. These three burst onto the scene a while ago. Individually, they have awesome talent. And together, they have yet to lose a match. They do fight in that riot gear that they're wearing, which is a little strange, but whatever. They're cool. These guys make up what is currently the most cohesive and well-functioning unit in the WWE. And on the other side, we have this team. A team made up of this guy, this guy, and this guy, who have absolutely nothing in common. Seriously, there is no reason for these three to be on a team. But you see, the kitties love them. And when kitties love you, 
this happens. Just action figures. All the action figures. And because that means some of this. Money. We all get to sit through a match with these three guys in it. Moving on. Eight-way dance fight? Oh, jeez. Where do we even start with this one? Okay, uh, this is Prince Albert. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, I hate you, Joel. I hate you so much. I forgot about that. <sighs> okay, oops, sorry. Okay, this is Prince Albert. He used to wrestle a while, but he left. Then he came back, but he came back like this. For some reason, he's Japanese now. He was supposed to be very threatening, but that totally didn't work out. Not even a little bit. So he was about to fade away into obscurity until he totally got retooled into a dancer. Not kidding. Now called Sweet Tea, this guy joined Brodus Clay and his dancers to form our four-person dance team. And who are these fine people going to be facing tonight? This is Team Road Scholars and the Bella Twins, their opponents. But I want you to focus specifically on the bearded man in the bathrobe. This is Damien Sandow. He's probably the classiest motherfucker you will ever know. Just, just look at that bathroom. Classy as shit. Anyway, this fine gentleman is the most cultured of all the WWE guys. Pray to whatever gods you prefer that this man gets a mic in his hand at some point tonight. Not only does he hold that shit like it's a fancy ass wine glass, but he also uses delightfully big words. No one can insult the unwashed masses, that's us quite the way that this glorious man can. Prepare for the joy of getting insulted by this man, it will be the greatest thing ever. The Intercontinental Championship match between Wade Barrett and The Miz. Are we actually watching this match? I mean, it's a pre-show match, so there's not really any build-up here. I mean, both of these guys are in movies. Is that enough for a feud? Do we have to promise to see the movie of the winner? Because I did not sign up for that. Trust me, you didn't either. Side note. When you type in the Marine 3 into Google, it says, Did you mean the Marine 2? Like it's trying to save you. Anyway, this match is happening. There's not much more to say. But here's a picture of Miz versus a koala. Big guy versus other big guy. Like the match before, there's not much to say about this one. These are two really big guys, and they're going to fight each other. Build up over. It's possible that Mark Henry will mention the Hall of Pain, which is a list of people that he hurt. Ryback will undoubtedly mention feed me more at some point. This is not anything, it's just something that he yells. Like how normal people yell, oh yeah, or go sports team. I guess he thinks it's intimidating or something, which it isn't. But that hasn't stopped him from trying. So, this is the match. Uh, that's actually supposed to be a, a GIF file of Mark Henry doing his little dance. Uh, and versus the very hungry caterpillar. If you're lucky, I'll post a video of me doing the Mark Henry dance. The World Heavyweight Championship, Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger. This is Jack Swagger. It's okay if you've never heard of him. He's kind of been gone for a while and only recently came back with a new character for himself, which can literally be summed up like this. They dicker derbs. Not even kidding. This guy came back as a guy who wants to take back America from the illegal immigrants. What? That's still a thing. Now, the thing about Mr. Swagger is that he's not got the best mic skills in the world, so they got him one of these. This is Zeb Coulter. He has literally been brought in to do all of Jack Swagger's talking for him, which is basically just long monologues of Tea Party rhetoric that Swagger just nods in the background. Hopefully, tonight, we will just get him in the corner while Swagger fights. That way, you don't have to listen to a racist rant from the guy, and instead focus on the good part of Zeb, which is... That glorious, glorious mustache. Look at it. Mmm. So, we've got a racist bad guy for this match. Three guesses on who his opponent will be. Anybody surprised? No? Good. Moving on. See, there's not much interest here, very little build-up for this title. This would be a good opportunity for a bathroom break tonight, except for one thing. Remember that briefcase from earlier in the PowerPoint? See, that briefcase means that at any point from last July to this July, Dolph Ziggler can get a title shot for the world title. The very title that this match happens to be for. 
which means that at any point during this match, Ziggler could run down to the ring and cash in, getting his shot, even if the current champion is broken and beaten from his previous opponent, which would be an easy win for Ziggler, turning this into this. Oh, God, Joel. <sighs> and now, on to the main events, but first this. That one's for you, Chris. He's Chris's favorite. Let's just forget this ever happened, okay? Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. This is Brock Lesnar. The one who's lifting the other human being. That's Brock. The following are things that have a similar fighting style to Brock Lesnar. The Hulk, a giant brick wall, and a bus. Basically, he likes to hit things hard. He is, to other wrestlers, what furniture is the toes. And there is a ton of history here that's about to get crammed into two slides. Brock was a huge deal in the company years ago, but then he up and left to go play football and have real fights, not WWE ones. Let's all take a moment to laugh at the fact that his football number was 69. <laughs> 69. Almost one year ago, Brock finally came back to the excitement of this one fan. This is supposed to be a gif of the super fan guy. Yeah. See, we were really excited to see Lesnar back, because as stated before, the man fights like a fucking dump truck. And he actually had one really great match against John Cena. Then, something amazing happened. Sweet bacon flavored rainbow tits. Is that Paul Heyman? Okay, to try to explain to you how truly an amazing of a guy Paul Heyman is in the wrestling world would take a whole different PowerPoint all on its own. And we would be missing the whole show as I just waxed lyrical about Mr. Heyman. Just know that if we're very lucky, at some point tonight, this man will be handed a microphone. And amazingly constructed rhetoric will pour forth that will case you in to reevaluate your entire worldview. Or at least get you to make this Obama not bad face. And if you're very lucky, Paul Heyman will say Brock Lesnar's name. No human being has ever said the name of another human being as awesomely as Heyman says Brock Lesnar's name. Trust me, it will make you do this. Oh right, the match. Okay, there's this guy, Triple H. He used to be a wrestler, you may have seen him last year. Now he's pretty much in charge of the company, so he wears a suit. That's how you know he does business. Well, they had a match, and Triple H lost. Really badly. So Brock won, right? What did he win, you might ask? After all, he must have had something to gain in this match. Shut up. There's no time for your logic here. This is wrestling, damn it. So now here we are, six months later, and Brock and Triple H are having a rematch at WrestleMania. So there are stakes this time. Shut up. Okay, so technically if Triple H loses, he's forced to retire from in-ring action. But if you'll remember, Triple H is in charge of the business side of the company. The guy fights maybe two matches a year if he's feeling extra generous. So are there really any stakes for this match for anybody? <laughs> Shut up. The streak match. The Undertaker versus CM Punk. When we last left The Undertaker, he had just defeated Triple H to increase his WrestleMania streak to 20 and 0. 20 and 0. Who could possibly challenge that type of legacy? Oh wait. Who's that? Look in my eyes, what do you see? See a punk on my TV. In case you didn't realize it, the previous page is used to represent the fact that CM Punk is our super favorite guy in the entire show. Like, this amazing. The thing is, is that CM Punk is supposed to be a heel. A heel means bad guy. And we're supposed to boo him. We find this irrelevant. We're going to cheer for this band anyway. He is awesome. How can we cheer for a guy who's supposed to be a bad guy, you ask? Well, actually, this is probably the best example I can give. If you get this reference, then you get 15 points. Congratulations, you are now winning the PowerPoint. However, to get because he is so awesome, nobody wants to boo Mr. Punk. I don't understand this sentence. Joel, do better. And remember, we will be cheering for this fine, upstanding man this evening. But because he's trying to get booze, sometimes in storyline, Punk has to go very far in an effort to get the much-desired booze. How far, you ask? Take the storyline here, for instance. This beautiful human is Paul Bearer. His name is a hilarious pun. 
Let's pause for a moment to let it sink in. Damn it, Chris, I said pause. Screw you, Joel. I do what I want. In storyline, Paul Bear is the father of The Undertaker, but in real life, a few weeks ago, Paul unexpectedly died. But in order to get us to boo, CM Punk began to torment The Undertaker using the real-life death of Paul Bear. See this urn? Which Paul Bear has always carried around with him. It symbolizes Paul and his connection to The Undertaker. And CM Punk stole it. This led to Undertaker getting the crazy eyes and attacking CM Punk to get his urn back. But CM Punk had another trick up his sleeve. Pocket sand! No, that's actually not really a joke. This past Monday, CM Punk dumped the ashes of the Undertaker's deceased father all over him. How's that for getting them booze? Now, in all honesty, Punk has to lose this match. Not only does he have to get punished for, well, that, but also there's the whole streak thing to remember. They're way too close to WrestleMania 30 to have Undertaker lose now. So even though we all know that this is more or less another assured win for the Undertaker's streak, we still hope... In the bottom of our hearts, we might get to see this. The WWE Championship, John Cena vs. The Rock. Those of you who saw the slideshow last year might currently be like this. Didn't I learn about this match last year? If so, you're not alone. I promise you, Google WWE and Deja Vu, and this is the very first picture that pops up. No joke. Okay, so I think some of our friends actually did that, and it proved not to be true. So, joke's on you, Joel. Well, remember how that match was supposed to pass the torch from the past generation of wrestlers to this one? Well, it ended like this. As you can see, The Rock defeated Cena at WrestleMania, and the torch remained firmly unpassed. Could not find a picture of The Rock with the torch. Please pretend that this nice lady is The Rock. You could pretend the draft is a draft. So, with Cena now seeking redemption, that means it's time for a rematch. This time is for the title. Okay, for this slide, it's important to note that Joel had Here Comes the Money playing. Honestly, though, the once-in-a-lifetime match last year made them a ton of money. And according to WWE math, that means that twice-in-a-lifetime should mean twice as much money. And as we have previously discussed, WWE loves, loves, loves money. If Chris says anything about using Shane's music with Vince's picture, then everybody drink. I didn't say anything about that, by the way. While we're not exactly thrilled with having to see the same match we paid for last year, over the past two weeks, Cena has actually done a really good job on the weekly show bringing up actual character development reasons for us to get invested into this match. Turns out, Cena is actually capable of some pretty good character development and emotional performances, though there's evidence to the contrary. Like Legendary. Twelve rounds. The Marine. The reunion? And that's right, Homeboy's been in three Fred movies. So, against all odds, this could actually end up being an okay match. Just as long as this one actually has a good final feeling to it, I don't want this happening. <sighs> Some final notes before we wrap up. Get it? Notes. I know we focused a lot on team friendship back there. But I want to make sure everyone knows how truly great Daniel Bryan is. I mean, you only got to see him for 18 seconds last year. So real quick, just know how truly great Mr. Bryan is. Behold the skills. And basically what that is, it's a, another GIF file. It's uh, the nice little ball <laughs> thing that he did in a match against Tyson Kidd. Go look for it on YouTube, it's pretty cool. This is Brad Maddox. Please, please, put those boners away. I know he looks like this, but we don't have time for that. We need to focus on WrestleMania. Okay, just a few more. Anyway, there is a chance that we will get to see Brad Maddox tonight, which would be awesome. First of all, because he looks like, well, you know. But also, because the man is a damn delight. Just charming as hell. Trust me, you'll see. Also, Brad Maddox used to be a referee. Here he is, looking all attractive in his uniform. But, if you hear someone ref being referred to as Ref McDreamy, you know that this is the guy. Alright, you now know all you need to know. That's right, it's time to start. I'm coming home, I'm coming home, so tell the world we're coming home. I freaking hate that song.